So we're on our way to Brian Kim's house of B-Cat Boards. And we're gonna be looking at some stuff and usually they come out to our house, but this time we're going out to their house. So they're our friends. So we're going to visit and have a good time. So check it out guys. If you wanna see some stuff, some of the B-Cat boards and how things are done, check it out. You'll see it right here. I'm driving, so I gotta pay attention. But you know, got the wife with me. She's sitting over here, looking pretty as ever, and we're on our way. Hey guys, so I told you I was coming over here to Brian's, Kim's house. They usually come to our house, but we came to theirs today. <laughs> we ate some chili and now we're ready to talk about stuff. If you like stuff, check it out. So Brian's gonna show you, here's something he's gonna show you that a lot of people have trouble with. Some people do, not a lot of people, because us guys, we throw away directions and we just start putting things together. So Brian's gonna show you the proper way to put, to put his planer boards together to put his planer boards together so check this out guys and this is something you're going to appreciate because it's coming from the guy that builds them so bcat boards is getting ready to show you how to assemble and put them together right and what, what whatever you need to know he's getting ready yeah. to show you so okay what do you think brian yeah we'll do it you're gonna show them yeah i'll show them all right when you get a set of the boards you'll get a set of instructions a uh, list of hardware um how they go together. So what I'm showing you here is for one board, it'd be two rings, the clip for the back, the twist lock clip with the rod, and the hardware comes on the rod. I put it all on a rod, and that's the way it'll actually go on the board also. So what I do first is, I always take the first ring, and I'll put it in the rod, and then I'll put the clip on. Okay. So now we have all that there put together. And then I'll take the back ring and put this clip on it. Now I'm ready to get the board, which I'm going to take this board. This is the one we'll assemble. There's no BCAT logo on it. I always put them on before I ship. And so I'm not going to put that on now though. So now what we'll do is we'll just unscrew this Phillips and we'll keep it on the paper so you can see it. Okay. And I take off one washer, one flat washer, stainless steel, and one nylon. Now you have a stainless steel washer with a nylon washer. And then I stand the board up put the bolt through one side and put the washer on then the nylon washer oh I'm gonna grab it here so that's there like that then I take the rod and I start to spin it on there and when it gets snugged up I'll hold the clip in the the ring and then I'll just put the Phillips in it a good good Phillips snug it down tight and then what I'll do is I'll rotate the clip tightening it to where I want it some people like their clip upside down I like mine right side up so that part's done and then we just put the back clip on and slide it up or around there and the boards together and it is ready to go fishing all right now the reason that i thought it'd be a good idea for bry to show this is because that little plastic the little plastic washer yeah 
the little plastic washer where like show them where that exactly went right know? it's on the outside of each steel washer on the, the outside, plastic is not behind it not behind it but yeah it's kind of they're kind of like Almost using them like a lock washer, although they're not, and they can loosen up. So I always check my boards when I grab them to use them. I'll just turn a snug, like feel it. If it don't move, then I know it's tight. If it moves, it's loose, so then I'll tighten it back up. But I ha I don't have a problem with them coming loose because I check them all the time. Okay. And that hole, you can actually move this clip to this hole and you can suspend more weight off of it. And that, that's what that hole's for. But you can suspend weight off of this too, probably 24, 26 pounds max. And you'll still be able to see the whole foam. All over here, you could probably go 40, 45 ounces and it'll be more level in the water, but the water level will be halfway roughly. Uh, that's it. You know, Brian, here's a question that some people may be interested in. Is that some of your old, old B-cap boards from the old day, when he first started building them, he was building them out of, out of pool noodle. Mm -hmm. Which works great. Yeah. It works great. But, Brian's took things to a whole nother level to uh, to this kind of foam. What, what kind of foam is this? This is EVA foam. And it, it's just more dense, more solid. I actually believe there's more flotation with it, but it's more durable and it's it actually it's more professional looking. Yeah. Than, than, even though the pool noodle works great, and but it just ain't durable. It's not durable. I think this right here with the way you build things right. holds a lot better. Probably. Well, just to show you guys, like I'm gonna show you real quick. If you look at this, like this is pool noodle. Mm -hmm. This is foam. This EVA foam is really solid and tough. And I'm squeezing it about the same pressure, if you can see that. Yeah. Like, you can't, it's very dense and durable. Yeah. So. It's a lot more durable. And that's what the green is. The green is EVA. I like the green. green. Yeah. <laughs> the blue is I think EVA. green is your pocket one. It, it is green, green then orange. And the blue is EVA. The blue is a little bit softer, but it still works great. And then the... Uh, the multi-species board is uh, EVA, and this is a harder EVA even yet. This is really dense, but it works great. What's the size difference like from some um, regular boards? Yeah. So this is the size, this is multi-species? Multi-species. Yeah. This is a regular board like, you would use this for big blue cats? Big blue cat, yeah, channel, channel cats. Cat. You could use this for channel cats too, or walleye, uh, striper. I actually like the size of this boat. Yeah, it does. It, it, yeah. Nice. Actually, uh, walleye is what it was made for since I live right off by walleye country, right on Lake Erie. And, uh, but there's a lot of uses for it. Yeah. And you can catfish with them. Yeah, um, that's definitely. Yeah. I've been using these boards for quite some time. Mm -hmm. When you first started using the CBA, I mm -hmm. got some from you. And you probably can see them in my older videos. It's the marble type one. Got mm -hmm. the marble color. Yeah, that was the first one we ever got. Yeah, EVA. And I tell you what, they're, they're real nice. Yeah. They're durable. Uh, and the reason I'm doing this video is because I did do something stupid when I first got them, is I put some things together wrong with them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like and, all the hardware on one side. Yeah, I put all the hardware, and I wanted to do this video because of that. And I know I'm not the only person that's probably ever done something like that. So, right. Uh, Bryce showed the right way to do it. Which is okay, because Brock comes over every once in a while, he comes over to the house, and he's like, hey, you got those put together on. I'm like, do uh -huh. it. So, yeah. anyhow. And I like the round foam, not only for its flotation, but you can see it. It's so easy to see. Even even the colors you think you wouldn't be able to see in the water, like blue, you see it really well because it's so big, It's just, and it's light. So that, that was one of the reasons I went with the, the bigger round foam. I'm going to grab this over here and okay. tell about this, Brian. Oh, that's our new little slip bobber we're coming out with. Um, got a carbon fiber tube down the middle and uh, two different angles. So you can run it this way into the water being here or this way if you want. 
Um, it will suspend six ounces and the water level will be right about up to this where this angle quits. But, so you could use this for a lot of things. Channel cats, um, a bluegill. You could even skip jackfish with them. Um, I think they're gonna be pretty neat. And this, this is the little, the little brother to our bigger bobber that we sold a while ago. It is made out of the same, same the bigger. stuff. Bigger. Uh -huh. I can't get them down. Yeah. Uh, this bobber. Here's the big bobber. What would this hold up, guy? Right? This was, uh, it'll hold 26 ounces, but it'll come down about here in the water column. 26 ounces. 26 ounces. So a lot of people already are using them to drag behind the boat, suspending bait with them, and having good luck with them. Yeah. They're doing great. And I'm looking at the way this is put together. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, this is some like, the way these are put together is just like durable. There's nothing yeah. to rip apart on this. Well, there's, all. there's a plastic tube inside, and then up in the top, there's about an inch of half inch Delron that goes down the tube. I put a screw through the side of that, and then on top is the plastic inch and three quarters. Uh, it's polycarbonate plastic. And then I run a screw down into the Delron there, and this is glued. So you would never pull that, never pull it out of there, ever. No. Uh, stainless steel quarter inch rod in the middle to hold the uh, sinker slide clip in. And then I got it counterweighted with two, uh, two lead muzzle loader balls, about a half half ounce maybe so it helps hold it vertical if you don't have a lot of weight on it so that way it ain't laying down on its side it's gonna stand up at least it'll stand up it could be a little crooked if there's four ounces on it but once you get eight ounces on these they're right straight up in the water Brian, you, you put a lot of thought in, into doing what you do mm -hmm. and, and everything that no matter what you pick up in here from, from this one to this one to mm -hmm. this one to this one if you pick it up, they're all going to be the same. Yeah, or or I try to make each one better. Yeah. I got to, I don't know, it's, it's just something I do. Everything I build, the next one's got to be better. Yeah, everything is going to be the same. It, the way he puts things together, you know, if you could see it inside of there, I don't know if you could see that. And that's not one that I would sell because I don't like the way this foam looks right. here. This is just one hanging up here. That that's one that I'll use. So this is one that he'll use or whatever. This is... I'm just using this one as an example because we reached up there and grabbed it. But if you look how this is built, I mean, and well, he's pulling down something else here. So, and also, I did a custom build of one that's eight inches tall for a guy that wanted a bigger one, and I'm going to be doing a 12 inch tall one for somebody that wants one in Arkansas. Really? Mm -hmm. 12, now, what would a guy do with a 12 inch? They're going to run it up by a dam. Okay. In the in the water, I guess I that's what they're doing. But uh, yeah, and like this little this little bobber, I won't sell this bobber to nobody because on the side of it it has a flat spot, and I, I won't let it go out like that. It just it don't happen. So this will be one of my bobbers. Actually, it'd be one of Willie's. I think. <laughs> Maybe no, Willie's got one over there. I got one over your bobber. Yeah, but. Does, I always use the stuff that I won't send out. That's great. Like I said, anytime you get anything from, from Brian over here, it's going to be to perfection. And then the boards, we actually went to a powder-coated board now, and it's 6061 T6. So they're a little stronger than what they used to be, but there's no weight difference. Just taking it to another level. It, you know, the powder coat helps me because it don't take as much time when I was wet painting them. Yeah. So the powder coat looks better, more durable, and I could probably get different colors. I haven't checked into it yet. We just started doing the powder coat boards. And, uh, but yeah, every, every board I do, I try to make better than the next, like the little glue, little bead of glue right here. Looking? You know, I try to make that better than the next one. And it's just ongoing, I radius all the edges. Um, if anybody would want, I could sand the little, the little cut marks out of here if I wanted to. I've done that before on the Patriot boards, so there's no cut marks in it whatsoever. But I just don't leave, like leaving uh, sharp edges. Being a sheet metal fabricator for 40 years, our job was to make sure nothing had a burr on it. Right. And when I look at the foam and I look at a sharp edge, that's a burr to me. 
yeah. I got to sand it off. So every piece of foam is sanded by hand after it's cut. Take any sharp edges off to yep. make it rounded. Yeah, make Not it rounded. Not that it's going to cut you. It's just it's yeah. better. It's, it's a, more appealing to die. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I like it to be a good looking board, but also a board that's going to work. Yeah. What's there's nothing wrong with having a board that works to perfection plus looking perfection. Right. Exactly. Yeah. You know? Yeah. If you're going to be out there using something, people look at it, might as well have it look good, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, might as well. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, there's something too I wanted to show you that is very interesting on, on Bry's boards. If you look down the back of this, now you're going to say, well, what is he talking about? But I'm going to show you. If you look down the back of this, there's no seam. Do you know why there's no seam? Because when Bry way his mind works he built these boards to where when he drops these plates what do you call this stuff the board the board when he drops these plates inside of this flotation it only goes down in it there's no slit yeah. that's where you slide it in there there's yeah. no slit here it's actually placed and pocketed out yep. just for this board there's no slit and sliding it down now the beauty of that is is you won't have a corner it starts pulling back away from things mm -hmm. from being a slit all the way down and then the front it does the same thing right the front's the same way it's actually placed down into the flotation so you're not going to have any corners that start peeling back mm -hmm. and opens up more and more and more it's actually inside of it and it's the same way with them all all the boards we make they're all put into a pocket it's a little more work cutting them that way but it's worth it yeah it's, it's absolutely because it's going to save yeah people's it's just, nothing's going to peel apart it, no. it can't peel apart that mm -hmm. way you would actually have to purposely destroy this to yeah it apart. yeah there's no water starting to peel a corner back and it right. opens up it's just, yeah, you have to absolutely just matter of fact hold on i see something i'm gonna grab one. Oh, oh yeah no do you see the orange one he's the orange one you can see it better yeah Perfect example. I've seen this laying over here because he's got a bunch of them cut over here. <laughs> but the slit in this is only where the board goes. It's not all the way sliced all the way down through it, then uh, open it up and stick it in there. I it's them. only for where the plate itself goes. The words before I glue them, mm -hmm. I'll actually sand this edge because I don't like putting glue on a smooth, smooth painted surface. So I'll, I'll every one. I'll sand that down and sand this down and sand the top down. And then the glue gets put in the foam and then you can see it go right in this pocket. Slides right down in. It's inside. Of inside it. the pocket. Nothing to peel apart. And then, and then me, cause I'm particular, I actually tape all the foam off and I tape the board off so it gets no glue on anything. And then once it's in there, I'll clean off the glue with paper towels, pull the tape off, and then I run that bead of glue down the side of each, each side. That's the perfection that goes into bead cap boards. That's yeah. why that, uh, That's why they are what they are. Right. You're getting something that's gonna last a long, long time. You take it out in the yard and stomp on it, of course you're gonna break anything, but exactly. as far as using for fishing, it's gonna last and last and last. It's, well, it's a tool. It's a tool like a fishing pole. You know, you don't you don't want to step on your fishing poles. Man, you don't stomp your yeah, fishing poles. I don't want to step on my planer boards. <laughs> <laughs> Some people stomp fishing poles, don't they? Some people do. If Some people to, slam them against boats. And, yeah. But but yeah, that that's uh that's yeah. just that's just another thing. That, you know, the that, same thing. Here's the, here's the the walleye foams the same way. Yeah, that's for, for this here. Yeah, this and there's a the walleye foam the same way. Cut into the board, not across the board. Yep. Or not into across it. the board. It's in the board. Right in the board. No slot right here on the end of the foam for a board to stick back here and start peeling off. And that's not going to happen. This is why, guys, this is why I did this video to take you in depth to let you see what you're actually getting from, from BCAT boards. Yeah. You're, you're seeing in depth right now. That a lot of people don't get to see. No. A lot of people don't know. A lot of people don't understand how much time goes into our boards. But I like doing it. So when I know a set of board goes out, I know they're getting a good set of boards. I'm glad we did this because I've actually <laughs> saw something that I really didn't even 
Yeah. And I'm around you all the time. Yeah. Now these are the twist lock clips that we use on our boards. And when we get them, they only open a little tiny bit. I don't know if anybody's ever noticed that that's used these. But when I get them, I will take them apart and I will regrind the angle on this top piece right here. Take this bolt out, spin it around, regrind that. And now look at the gap versus the way it came. And then when you clamp down on it and then watch, it'll instantly open up and unclamp instantly. That's just a little bit of the extra work that we do here. And so to take apart four or 500 clips and sand them, then put them back together, take some time. But I'll do it because I know whoever's gonna be using that clip, it's helping. Yeah. Hey guys, if you drag baits and stuff, we know that, you know, years ago, you know, one of the big things that came out was like the Larry Muse type dragon weight that, you know, Larry put out there for people to see. And, and people's used them. People build them like Larry did, but Brian, you know, Brian here, he's took the same concept and put his own little twist to it, made things maybe in his own way to make it work how he wants it to work. So what Brian's gonna do, he don't sell these. Brian does not sell these in B-cap boards. Mm -mm. He's just gonna show you, just for informational wise. Yeah. You know, just- If they, the, they wanna make their own waves. Yeah, he's just gonna show you a quick way to- How I do it. How you can change them up to do different things to float more to float less yeah. and whatever that's it and just you know so you can make your own if you want more or less to help you out really. yeah to help you out to so check it out guys so he's getting ready to go with it so i'm gonna back out the way and brad's going to show you the process of what he's doing to kind of create this so you see this and he's going to tell you what everything is as he goes yeah we're going to start out with it's 3 8 ID silicone tubing, half inch OD. You get it at Menards, Home Depot. And we're gonna build a four ounce dragging weight. And I start out with about 20 inches, maybe just a little bit over. Cause I'm gonna straighten it out and then I'll cut it to length when I'm done. And then, get that little, it's an arrow shaft, goes right inside it. And now I'm going to heat this up to where it gets really hot. And then I'm going to cool it down in the water. Okay, so we start heating it up. And it takes a little while. But if you like making stuff, it's worth it in the end. You customize your own lengths, um, weights. Maybe you might have, a, this is a four ounce that's going to be 20 inches long. Maybe... Maybe it'll float a little too much for you. Maybe you want to cut it down to 17 inches. And you can do that after you have it all made. You cut the one end off and redo the one end and try it at 17 inches. I like trying to keep them as straight as possible. If you let them sit in the sun, bent, they're gonna take that shape. So I always store them in a PVC tube. Okay, I just got it back from running under the water. And I dry it off a little bit. There we go. Now it stayed pretty straight. I mean, it's, and the more it's still warm, so the more it cools down, the straighter it's going to stay. We're going to use a four ounce um, pencil sinker. I get these from Cat Force One. Um, I like them because they're short and stubby, so it keeps more weight at the bottom. Longer, thinner ones. Put the weight more up into the tube. So what we got to do, this tubing is not going to fit over. I see. It's not going to fit over this, so I got to heat it up. And when I heat it up, I'm going to put a little oil on this and slide this tubing down over it and let it cool down. I'm going to heat this end up and put a little oil on this. We'll take care of the oil after we get this on there and it cools down and we'll get the oil back off of it so now i'm heating up the end 
They'll get it nice and warm. They do take a little time, but they're nice when you get them done. And we'll see if that'll. Okay, it slides right over. Okay. Now we let that cool down and take it out of the vise. Lay it right there like that. And then what we do next is the top. That's a half inch piece of black Delron. I sand it all down and when it's in a long shaft to get, I take the glossiness off of it so the glue will hold. So we're gonna put a little hole on the top to put the eyelet in. And that is gonna be an eighth inch drill bit. And we just find the center. We'll run it down in there about a half inch. Okay. That's that. I like the Loctite super glue, professional liquid. So I'm going to put a little super glue in that hole. And start this eyelet. I'm gonna run that all down in there with this. And then let that glue dry. I set it off to the side. I already got some made up that I made a while ago. That's what they look like when they're dry. And we chamfered this in because the tube will actually have to get heated up to go over these too. So we'll do that next. This one's had oil on it quite a few times, so get that. Okay, and now I'll heat this end up. up on there to let it go over a little bit okay let it cool down what are you doing there Brian um, I'm cutting the 3 8 it's called backer rod it's for windows but I'm gonna put it inside the tube sometimes you get this stuff and it's a little oversized this seems like it's the right size, I probably could make longer pieces, but no matter. And then I got a little here. Now, while you're putting that together, I got a question. So, if uh -huh. you run down without just without putting this in there, uh -huh. does this help keep it from collapsing in it the does. deep deep water? It does. There's a uh, there's a guy in Alabama that's on our team, and I showed him how I made these, and he made some without. Without the, without that in it, and it, when he had it down in, uh, I think it was 35 foot of water, he brought it up and the tubing was collapsed. So the water pressure must have collapsed it, but I've never had him do that with, with uh, the foam in it. Really, we're almost done. Yeah. There really ain't a whole lot to it. I put uh, rattles down in here, right here, inside the tube. And I've actually taken these apart and added a ball on each side. So there's two balls in each one. And they rattle pretty good. Does it help? I don't know. That's the big rattle debate. That's all part of <clears throat> experimenting and yeah. doing stuff is finding out what works and what don't, what works the best, what don't work at all. Yeah, there could be a hundred things you do and only one thing works. Right. And it's just all all personal preferences, I think. I mean, yeah. I don't know. And when I make something and if I like it, but maybe I want to tweak it, then I'll tweak it and... I usually stick with it for a while. This is the only weight I use is what I make. 
I went through so many different weights. We used to make weights and. So what's your favorite weight, Brian? Twenty inches and four ounces. Right now, twenty inches, four and five ounce for Alabama. <clears throat> when I go to Alabama. What if you was to be fishing in our local lake? Our local. Where? What if you was to be fishing in our local lake? I'd probably use a three ounce or a two ounce. And I haven't really practiced a lot with the three or twos because I haven't been fishing a lot of local lakes. I've been Alabama fishing for the last year. And we got these working really good. And I can honestly say, I don't know of the three guys that's been using them there of us losing a rig, honestly. And that, that sounds crazy, but the one guy's Chris Fuller from Alabama. He hasn't lost a rig using these. And I haven't. Um, in fact, most of the time, I don't know if a lot of people think the dragging weight gets hung up or the hook, but when I used to make dragging weights, I would go back to every snag. And I can tell you 99% of the snags that we got, the hook was snagged and not the weight. So that's why I think these are adjustable in height. Yeah, you'd be dragging it like this, so your leader's off the ground already, but with a little float, it's even up a little higher. But the shorter these weights are, I could see them getting stuck inside of rocks, whatever, and getting snagged up. But um, we've been lucky with them so far. Okay, we'll do these. We'll do these. We're lacquer thinner, and I just all I do is go down in there with the. You're right. just cleaning out to get the oil residue. Yeah, right? getting the oil out of it. So and the glue sticks and mm -hmm. no problems. Then I'll put it in the blower or whatever, let it dry out. Then I get the one and actually CA if you if you know a lot about CA, moisture helps it set. So it don't matter that I'm going to wet this a little bit to get it back in there. I don't, probably don't have to. I can get it in there like that. Okay. This is the one I just screwed up. Okay. So then what I do, I take a real small little tiny Phillips. I stick it down beside this like that. Then I'll take that CA and let it drip down in there. And then I'll roll this around a little bit. Do it again. Roll that around. You can see the CA getting in there. Do it again. Till it's all the way around, which it's going to be. Right now is going to be the last place I put it. Done. And the CA is all the way around that. That looks good. Mm -hmm. I've never had one of them fall out, neither. Knock on wood. You probably can't even hardly jerk them things out here. Probably not. Okay, then we do the same thing with the weight side. Get that off the weight. Clean this up. Use my acetone. I mean, if if you just want to experiment and make your own weights instead of spending a lot of money all the time on weights, then try making some of these. You might find you really like them. If you ain't making something to experiment, and you ain't catfishing. <laughs> yeah. And I'm always one to try to make stuff, so. But if you're building these, like say 10 at a time, it goes a little faster than what we're doing now. And it's one at a time and it's just, can do it, do it like a production run. And get this one in there. And get that pulled up in there. Okay. And the same thing with the little screwdriver. Get it down in there. 
put in some CA, pull that thing around. And that's it. The CA come out on top. Wipe it off. Put some nice seal on it too, being around uh -huh. the edge. And you let it dry overnight. And then this, that actually was supposed to be on the inside. But what I'll do with them is I will take them and I'll I just clip them off. And then I got a file. Where to put it? And I file the brass off. Some people may even want to leave that on there, then you can add a weight to it. You could, you could add a weight, you could probably add a rattle to it, something like that. It's that little hoop at the end, for some people it could be useful, for some people it could be a nuisance. Mm -hmm. so. I just made a mistake and left it out, so now it's off, <clears throat> and that's the finished four ounce weight. <laughs> Like I said, if it floats, I can tell you for a fact, in Alabama, when I was using regular size Demon Dragons or a three inch peg float at 0 .5, 0 .6 mile an hour, these would pull really good. When I went to the big, the big Demon Dragon, this one, and we pulled at the same speed, the bait would come to the top. It would lift this weight up. So then I switched to a five ounce with these and it pulled perfect. So you just gotta experiment with them. But that's it, all done and ready to use. I hope this helps you. You guys can make some stuff and have fun doing it. <laughs> Thanks.